Women is Losers, you guys. Mill Valley Film Festival. And I'm so proud and happy of this young lady here because we would jockey for position on the red carpet. Cindy, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Philip. It's so wonderful to see you. I mean, I've, you know, I've been with you here for so long, so many years at the Mill Valley Film Festival, and it's just wonderful um, to be here with Women as Losers, you know, on the red carpet for the Bay Area premiere. Right. What interested you in this particular film? Because I'm sure you get offers all the time. What was it about this one that made you say yes? I've in, uh, been producing a number of films now over the years. And, you know, Lisette is a really good friend of mine. She's the writer, director, producer. I've been um, working with a film from the very beginning. I mean, I'm talking about like very early days from, you know, from the idea to the writing of the script and so on and because um, I just really believe in her as a talent and a director I, have, I always knew that she could just do wonderful work so because I like to work with people um, that I really believe in and that inspire me as well so you know I decided that I did want to come on board this film project and support it all the way through. Now this is after the pandemic how does that make you feel now you're premiering your film here at, I would say, our home. Right. I mean, it's so amazing. I mean, we actually had our world premiere at South by Southwest and it was online, um, but that was just an amazing experience. I mean, what an honor to have a premiere at such, you know, a huge North American film festival. But, you know, now that the pandemic um, has died down a little bit, we're able to do some in-person premieres. And, you know, this is our Bay Area premiere, um, you know, here in Marin Cal County at Mill Valley. And, you know, I love Mill Valley so much as such a special place in my heart. So, I mean, I'm grateful to the festival and, you know, all the festival staff and, you um, it's, it's the most amazing experience. It's really surreal for me. It's surreal for me too, you guys, because as I said, we would jockey for position on the red carpet and then I got the invite and I looked at Cindy. This is a Cindy that I know and I am so effing happy that this is your, your baby. We're gonna see it all on the big screen now. How's that gonna make you feel to see it with the audience? I mean, I can't wait to see it with a large audience. I mean, of course, I've seen it a number of times, you know, over the last few months, but it's still, you know, even more special to see it in the Bay Area. It was fully filmed in San Francisco. And, you know, San Francisco is, I mean, it's such a beautiful cultural city. So this is very special. And, you know, Lisa, you know, she's born and raised um, in San Francisco. And this is inspired um, by, you know, her life and her family. So we're really excited for this. All right, Cindy, again, thank you. Good luck for all your future projects. Women is losers. We have one of the stars here, everybody, the Philip Sadiq Show, Mill Valley Film Festival, 44. We are here. Tell us who you are and how you got involved in this particular film. Ah, hi, how are you? <laughs> Great, how are you? I'm so happy to be alive and in a live theater with people getting to celebrate a film that we shot here. So it's super special to come back to the birthplace of this beautiful script. And I play the lead role. I play Selena, uh, the beautiful script that my beautiful director wrote, produced and created. And it was an incredible experience. And I am so happy to be here right now. Come on, you're more than just the actress in the thing. You did some other things too. Uh, share, share with, share with the people. Yeah, share. With it. So, okay, 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 okay. My name is Lorenza Izzo. I am the lead actress, and I'm also one of the executive producers of the film. And it was my first time producing, and I had the most incredible experience doing that. There's a part of me that really now understands how much I want to be a part of the creative and the birthing process of a film, and. You know, to call the big shots is incredibly gratifying when you can, you know, be there and actually have a suggestion that can have a repercussion that will be beneficial for the film. That feels really good. I mean, half of the time you're just figuring it out and you're running. <laughs> but it felt incredibly satisfactory when we could, you know, be at that time, like we're about to wrap and the, the plug's going to get pulled. And you're like, what do we do now? And I'm like, OK, let's do this. There's something incredibly gratifying about you know, being in a time crunch and having to call those shots. I, I love doing that. Right. How excited, I mean, COVID hopefully is running down. This I'm is the first year. It. I'm manifesting that COVID is running away. I'm just like, that's my thinking right now. Well, being very safe, of course. Of course. Now, in the film, there's someone in there that 
People would marvel. They would know who he is. Marvel. How would you like working with him? Marvel. How would you like working with him? Marvel. Didn't we all marvel at his performance? I yes, mean, Simu showed up to that set incredibly prepared. He's such a professional actor. I mean, back then when he showed up to set, we all knew. Like, everyone in this set and this, you know, cast had incredible star quality, at least to me. Working with them was incredibly how do I say this gratifying I learned so much from all of my cast members I huge fans of all of them deeply admire them and Simu just came in and 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 killed it he knew the character he knew how to do it he knew how to bring humanity to what he was doing which is a difficult role um working with him was so much fun too he's a fun guy as well and I'm just so happy for him I'm so proud and I, I I'm marveling <laughs> at his success go Simu <laughs> Last question. With this experience, what will you take away from it? Now that now you're an actress, now you're behind the camera. What will you take away with this? Oh, I want to keep doing this. I love doing this. I, I learned that I definitely like to take a part in the birth of a project and to, to, nur to nurse it from you know, a fetus all the way to a, to a grown toddler, child, teenager, whatever it becomes. <laughs> I love that analogy I did there. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Philip. There, there we go. Everybody, Mill Valley Film Festival, number 44, Women is Losers. We have the director with us, and uh, that title, we're going to get into that title. First of all, welcome. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. The title. Who thought of this title? Um, Janis Joplin thought about this title. It's the second mo second song she ever wrote. It was the first one she ever performed live in San Francisco in 1967, when um, the mo our movie starts in 1967. And I heard the song, and everything she was talking about was exactly the same themes that were in our movie. And I said, I did a little prayer. I said, I'm gonna borrow this. Um, someone's gonna make me change it, but I'm gonna hold on to it as long as I can. And we're going to make it to HBO Max October 18th without having changed it. So she's up there helping out. HBO Max, you guys, get it. Women is, women is losers. Tell us about your process. You only direct, but you had other hats, too, that you had to wear. Tell us about it. Well, I wrote this one. I started off writing, um, and I wrote this one. I directed it, and I produced it as well because I own a production company. Lorenza Itzo came on, and she executive produced it, um, and it was wonderful like to have that balance between both of our perspectives, um, You know, being able to like talk to each other about, is, does this feel real? Does this not feel real? It, it was a wonderful experience. But, yeah, um, I, I've always kind of done all of the hats um, because it is a story that you know uh, every story I think needs it, its own shepherding so I tend to write them I tend to direct them and I tend to definitely produce them because I like to see them all the way through and I want to make sure that they're done in a way that is representative of what was supposed to be there when we all start embarked on the story. Tell us this is a mix of an immigrant story and an American story. Can you tell us how you blended the two? Because a lot of people want to separate the two from each other. I don't think there is a separation. I think there's an American story. I don't think you can have an American story without an immigrant story. It's it's all you know, we always come we come into this into the story saying this is a story about Americans and it's a story about an Americans that you don't get seen, that don't get to be seen a lot, especially in the sixties and the seventies. I think we opened the film saying Look, this is the 60s and the 70s. There's no hype. There's no hippies. There's no tie dye. There's no flower power. Because for a lot of people, that wasn't the reality. And it wasn't the reality of the community that I came from. So, and there's so many rich stories there about our history. Um, the film is very meta in that way. It plays with history a lot. It shows, yes, we were told one history. There's also a lot of other history that we haven't heard of. And it really came down, um, because that's how I started the film, was a conversation with my mother, where she sat me down and told me everything that happened to her in the 60s and 70s as she was starting to become an entrepreneur, which was my path later in life. And the things that she was saying to me were so similar to what I was telling her was happening to me. And so that is why we created the fourth wall break. That's why I wanted to make the movie, because I wanted to uh, share that beautiful and eye-opening conversation with an audience. You know, it's interesting you should say that because... I looked to look through pictures. I looked through a family album and I saw some of my relatives from the 60s dressed up to the nines in cars. And I'm saying, why did you guys, guys drive cars across country? She says, because back in those days, black people of color, people of color were not allowed on airplanes. So we had the caravan. So I'm sure you had similar stories with your mom about that. Yeah, very similar stories. And thank you for saying that. that it, it, it's in America that we, as 
a new generation of filmmakers come up, I think we're going to start seeing more of, and thank God. Um, yeah, there were stories about my mom not having, I mean, let alone two months of maternity leave. There was no maternity leave. It was two weeks vacation. Uh, you know, she had a C-section and was in the office at two days later. That's an abdominal surgery. You know, she was telling me things that were we were still fighting for today, but they were so blatant and they were so, um, like, almost sci-fi. But yet, somehow, it seems like we are hell-bent on rushing back towards that time. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that this movie is going to come out at a time in our country where I feel like it needs it the most. Definitely not planned that way. I would have hoped that that wasn't the, the case, but... It is, and, and I hope that honestly whatever side of, of the aisle anybody is that they get to see this movie and it opens conversations within their own families. And Because um, I think there's a lot of stories that we don't know about the people that are under our own roof. You also worked with a, a Marvel hero, a Marvel star, or somebody from a, Mar from a Marvel somebody. What was it like working with this guy? I don't know. I heard he's pretty big. I think he's a big deal now. I'm not sure. Um, people seem to like him. I, I don't, you know, I guess he's amazing. He's, he's such a goofball. I wish I he's such a goofball. I love him to death. Um, he, you know, his journey and my journey is, have been, uh, what attracted I think, us to each other in terms of this story was like the things that we wanted to say about representation, you know, obviously him in the Asian American community, myself in, in, in the, and, um, the Latin American community, et cetera. And you know, he definitely wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't Shang-Chi um, when the movie happened, but he just had this presence. And when you walk on set, and Lorenzo will speak to this a lot, he walked on set and you were just kind of felt like, oh, okay, this is different. Like this person's here to do something um, bigger than, than uh, you know, he's here to do something really great. You could just feel that about certain people. And I, I guess because I'm a director, like, I, I, I that's kind of what I can, you know, you feel it. You just feel it. I don't know why. Some people just have it, and, and Simu definitely is that. And on top of that, he's so humble and so wonderful. Um, he's not shy. He's And he came to set and really just brought it. He just brought it. He did his job. He loved it. He learned a lot. We learned a lot. It was it was a really good experience. Fantastic. Now, I hear you put a lot of heart in here. Can you tell us how that made you feel when you saw the film on the big screen and the audience is doing her thing? It's weird. It was, so we made it with no expectations, right? It was made on a shoestring budget in our backyard. We all made it because we wanted to do something and we felt like it had to be done. That's why we did it. And then when we start, South by happened and we're like, oh, okay. That, and then we became the most watched out of South by. And we're like, whoa, people really like this. And then it's just been festival after festival after festival and award after award after award. And beyond that, it's the conversations that people have come to us with after the movie saying, that's my mother, that's me, that's my aunt. That, and they just feel really, really seen. So for us to be at Mill Valley, at, on our last in-person festival where we made the film in our backyard, it's just, it's a really, our, our team is coming, our crew is coming. It, it's just it's really great to see it on, on the big screen with an audience because it is a transformational experience and I've only gotten to experience that three times with the audience so this will be my third one and be my last one but um, yeah it's a wonderful experience. This will be the best one though the, the Mill Valley Film Festival not sliding anyone else but this will be the best one. I mean it's home turf right it's your home it's home turf a home team advantage so it's it's always good. Give me the rap sign. Okay thank you so, thank you so much. Thank you thank you.